Welcome back to News and Views. Time to talk boxing because Sunday morning our time in Germany, there is a huge fight. Daniel, the real deal girl, takes on Felix Sturm. To talk more about it, we're joined by boxing commentator Paul Upham. Paul, thanks very much for joining us. Great to be here. Now, I want to know, on an international scale, I mean, we, we know Green Mundine was very significant on a domestic scale. We think of Fennec and Azuma Nelson back in, what was it, 1990, early 90s. Where does this fight rate as far as significance for Australia? It's one of the most important uh, boxing matches for an Australian fighter in in decades uh, to go overseas and unify the titles. Daniel's the IBF world champion. He's going against Felix Sturm, is the WBA world champion. He'd be the first Australian-born fighter to unify titles overseas. We've seen Vic Darchidian and Costa Zou do it in America. But for him to go over there and do it in Germany, I think that shows the confidence he's got to be able to go to Germany and say, I'm going to go and beat Sturm in his backyard. Mm. A lot of Aussies know how Daniel Gill fights and his strengths and weaknesses. Tell us about Sturm and, I guess, how Daniel Gill can beat him. Well, Sturm came to prominence back in uh, 2004 in uh, Las Vegas. He actually basically upset the great Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya was given a decision, a gift decision on the cards, and he lost his WBO middleweight world title. He's came back and he's, he's won the WBA world title. He's only lost twice, 37-2. and two. Look, he's 33 years of age. He's not what he once was. Daniel Geel is now actually what Felix Sturm used to be. Felix Sturm used a lot of angles and, and speed and, and work rate to, to basically beat up Oscar De La Hoya that night. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Geel at 31, who's 27-1 and one, uh, record, uh, he hasn't got a lot of power, but and neither does Sturm. Sturm's only, he's had 37 wins, two losses, only 15 knockouts. It's going to be a technical match, but also about work rate and, and being able to fight the 12 rounds. And fighting in Germany doesn't really seem to be a concern for Australian boxers. They're happy to fight there. Well, I don't know about that. There's always that, that stigma after Danny Green and Anthony Mundine lost over there and a few others. But, look, the best asset that Daniel Gill has, that I can tell you, is his head. He's got supreme confidence, but he, he doesn't talk about it. He's the complete opposite to Anthony Mundine in so many ways, that he doesn't go out there and he doesn't get a lot of publicity. This is a huge boxing match. Everybody in Australia should be talking about it, but really he hasn't got that sort of recognition. A win for Daniel Gill is going to lift him up in the boxing stratosphere. He's going to get that big fight in America that he deserves. He's got the American promoter, Gary Shaw, pushing him over there now. And, and he won the IBF world title over there. He beat uh, Sebastian Sylvester, the other German. And that really opened it up. And I can't understand why Daniel Gill's not getting the recognition that he deserves in the betting. He's, an, he's a clear outsider, mm. even here in Australia. Mm. And, and uh, I think Gill's going to win. I, this fight was announced two months ago. And I said then that Gill will win on points. And I've seen absolutely nothing change in the last two months. I watched a lot of tapes, talked to a lot of people. Mm. Gill's going to win this fight. He, he's my lock of, the, lock of the year so far when it comes to winning. Gil's going to win in Germany on Sunday morning. We've got yeah. to get on. I was about to today. say, he's going to run over the, over the road mid-break and just head to the TAB. Interestingly, the winner of this fight fights Sam Solomon after his win in Geelong. That's an interesting little tidbit about this, isn't it? Yeah, well, Sam Solomon, a 38-year-old, who's been around for a long time, and uh, he won an eliminator in Geelong last Friday night. And the winner out of Sturm and Gil have to fight Sam Solomon. But really, Gil's only worried now about um, Sturm, and he's so confident. And the reason I think people are down him is they look at that loss to Anthony Mundine. In May 2009, he lost in Brisbane. I was there that night. I was calling the fight with Barry Michael and, and Andy Raymond. And you may remember there were six occasions where Anthony Mundine had the loose tape mm -hmm. and the fight was mm -hmm. stopped. That negated Daniel Gill's work rate, which is such an advantage of his. And I think Daniel looked at that fight later and think, you know, I should have won that fight mm -hmm. easily. That was the making of Daniel Gill. Don't worry that he lost to Anthony Mundine. That made him the great fighter he is today. Sturm hasn't fought anyone since De La Hoya on Gill's level. And this is a huge test for Sturm. And at 33 years of age, I don't think he's up to the test. Daniel Gill is going to win this fight. I'm so confident. It's going to be a great, a great time. If you're looking for a Father's Day present for Sunday morning, <laughs> buy your father this Daniel Gill win. It's going to be a world title win. He's going to come back with two belts around his waist. Sounds like a good present to, for Dad only. You have to get up pretty early, don't you? Four, about 4am 4 4 a.m. start, but 6.30am will be the main event. 6.30 and Daniel Gill's going to, he's going to prove to the Australia and the world that he is the best middleweight in the world today. Well, enough said on Daniel Gill. He's just winning. Simple as that. Let's talk Anthony Mundine after his win over Bronco McCart in July. What is next for the man? Well, the important thing was he fought in America. He got that first fight. The Australian promoter, Vlad Wharton, who's working over there now promoting him, he said he wants to put him on again in October. They'll probably fight in Las Vegas. I don't think they'll get the big fight yet. The, the fight he really wants is the IBF junior middleweight champion, Cornelius Bundridge, who's promoted by Don King. Now, Cornelius is 39 years of age. It's a really good matchup for Anthony. If Anthony can get another win in October 
And at this stage of his career, he's got to, he's got to gamble a bit. He's got to do a deal with Don King, which is not the best thing to do. Uh, but Vlad Wharton's done it all over before. And that's one of the best advantages that uh, Anthony's got. He's got Vlad Wharton over there who knows the system, who's do dealt with Don before. They can get that fight early next year. And that, a win there, can then parlay into some big fights. He wants to talk a fight about Mayweather. Hey, you've got to get a few more wins first. But hey, if Anthony keeps winning, maybe he gets the Mayweather fight. But... Let's get a couple more victories first. Mm. Okay, let's talk about Billy Dibb. We've got a, we understand he's got a change of promoter, and that promoter, in fact, has got some pretty big names. Yeah, TMT Promotions. You know what it stands? The Money Team. 50 Cent, the rapper, and his best friend, Floyd Mayweather Jr., are starting up a new promotional company. They're going to take on Bob Arum and Oscar De La Hoya in their own game. Huge opportunity for Billy Dibb to crack the market in America, mm. and a great show of faith by Mayweather to say, I want to sign Billy Dibb up. And just finally on Mayweather, are we any closer to having Manny Pacquiao fight Floyd Mayweather Jr.? For goodness sake, can we please make this happen? <laughs> it's not going to happen this year. It could happen early next year, April, May next year. Uh, Pacquiao's probably going to fight again December 1, but it won't be against Mayweather. It'll be against a rematch, maybe Bradley, Marquez or Miguel Cotto. Yeah, wouldn't that be a fight that we are all looking forward to? Paul Upham, as always, mate, thank you very much for coming in. We understand you'll be rooting for Daniel Gill on Sunday morning. He's going to win, Gilly. <laughs> Great to be here. Wonderful. Andy Roddick plays the retirement card ahead of his matchup with Australia's Bernard Tomic. That is next here on News and Views. And Serena serves notice as Venus crashes out. And how's Kerber's reaction here? It's almost like saying to the crowd, listen, I'm still here. I've still got something to say in this match.